Welcome to Backyard Philosophy, a podcast where a couple friends grab some cold ones, sit around the fire, and talk about science, philosophy, and history. Crack one open, sit back, and get a good laugh as we discuss everything from automation to why the meaning of life is 42. If you're like me, or many Americans, or in fact many people around the world, when you have a wide open road, no one's in your way, you have the tendency to put the pedal to the metal and speed. That's right, we're talking about speed limits and speeding in general. But before we get into that, Nick, how you doing? What are you drinking? I'm doing great. I am not dealing with any current speeding tickets. Not that I have had more than one, but it makes me upset. But I'm drinking a Rogue Dead Guy Ale. What are you drinking, Mike? I'm drinking some gin and juice, and I unfortunately do not have your uh, your luxury, Nick. I've already had one speeding ticket this year. I have a bad tendency of, I want to go faster, faster, faster. That's right, speeding tickets. Speeding tickets, which generate huge revenue for the United States, which we'll talk about in a minute. But first, I want to say, on average, 100,000 drivers are ticketed each year day for going too fast that's about one six shot of getting caught for speeding that is i mean that's like tripping over your own shoelaces you have about the same odds yeah that's that's uh you know never tell me the odds mike oh well i'm gonna keep telling you the odds because right now get too much in the odds uh let's can i tell you the history of speeding tickets Ooh, i do not know this please do so first off the first speeding ticket was created in the good old U.S. of A. At the time, technically, we were still a colony. Good old Boston. And I will read it for you. Ordered that no person whatsoever shall at any time hereafter ride or drive a gallop or other extreme pace within any of the streets, lanes, or alleys in this town on penalty of forfeiting three shillings for every such offense. And it may be lawful for any of the inhabitants of this town to make stop of such horse or rider until the name of the offender be known in order to prosecution. Why? I mean, I imagine getting run over on a horse by accident wasn't... I feel like that's not common back then, but I could be wrong. But was it just a noise complaint pretty much because you're speeding? Like, I'm not... I mean, what? What's the speed of an average horse? Like 30 miles per hour? Oh, no. It's less than that. Well, I mean, you have no frame of reference. A horse is a lot faster than a person walking. But I like how they said a gallop or other extreme pace. <laughs> <laughs> so a trot. A, a trot. trot might be considered. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I didn't realize that America 1701. started it. 1701. 1701. Um, since 1701 americans have had the need for speed (laughs) all right goose calm down kick the tires and light the fires or i guess i don't know kick the what do they call the the horseshoes the the guy who puts the horseshoes on and a shoer i'm pretty sure there's another name for it but i don't know enough to know if you're right or wrong (laughs) i'm just bullshitting right there i i think it's a shoer but i think there's also another name for it Okay, I thought it started with an F, but there's more. Oh, well, I do know what. Very farther in the future, unless you had something. Well, you said three shillings was the fine. You know what? You want to guess what the average fine is for today in America? Is two seventy five? Actually, you're over it, which is quite surprising. It's actually about one thirty five on average. Well, that's. I should have guessed my state was going to be higher. Good old Oregon. (laughs) Oh. I, well, speaking of states, the best state to speed in is in uh, Tennessee, where the average fine is about 50 bucks, but they could have changed it. You know, I got to bring Texas in the mix. Uh, Texas has some of the highest speed limits, but we also have some of the highest traffic deaths in uh, t- in uh, the United States. Uh, we count for about 12% of the nation total-wide from car-related deaths. So, uh, yeah, we, we go fast here. There's about... 1100 plus ish speed related traffic deaths in texas yeah that uh that doesn't really surprise me that much you got a lot of flat ground and not a lot of people 
no idea. I'll go 80 and I'll get past like I'm in the slow lane. It is ridiculous out here. But Nick, you've had a speeding ticket, I believe. I've had an undisclosed amount. It sucks paying that. And I've always wondered, where does that money go? Because on average, uh, the average American speeding, you add them all together, about $3.8 to $5.4 billion of revenue. Is that going to the government, to the police department? Where Where's all that money going to? I'm going to guess it goes straight into the government's pocket for maybe road repair or maybe just like uh, From a person who's worked for the Department of Transportation, for working on roads. I'm going to tell you, it's not going to fixing your roads. <laughs> if I had to guess, I imagine it's going to the local police department. It, I mean, it seems like a great way for a place to get money. Because I imagine most cops don't really care if you're doing 10 miles, per, 10 miles over the speed limit, but if they're districts running low on money it seems like it's an easy score but you'd be surprised on where that money goes to because i i have no idea well most no idea where the agencies law enforcement agencies that issue tickets only get a small this is just me quick googling only get a small fraction of that money that money then it goes into a general fund and from the couple articles that i quickly scanned over doesn't really say where that general fund is for. Yeah, that's uh, some classic Oregon shit right there. But Nick, I have a morality question for you. Where do you think we should have speed limits? And where do you think we shouldn't? Well, it's a good question. So here's kind of where I'm looking at it from. So obviously, you knew we were going to talk about Montana. Because for the longest time, Montana didn't have speed limits until the feds made them adopt a speed limit in order to get money. So I want to talk about why we have certain speed limits. So in 1973, Congress enacted national maximum speed law, and that's what created the 55 mile per hour speed limit. And that's because there was an oil crisis, like we said. So because of that, you go slower, you use less fuel. And then as that went on, the government said, if you don't obey our speed limit law, we're not going to give you federal money, which is why... 55 was pretty popular eventually in 1995 was repealed which is now why it's 65 now we're going to talk generally about highways i guess before you get into that nick i found i found a little bit more clarity to where does that money go it kind of depends on the district it's kind of up for debate some districts have it 50 50 going to that local district and the rest going to the state fund some have it 75 25 it's kind of negotiable depending on where you are that's i found very interesting because i if nick this might lead into the highways i never gotten a speed ticket on the highway but we got it in farmland or residential areas if that makes sense yeah i i've gotten mine on the highway but it was 35 miles an hour is the speed limit so the rural highways It's a a weird mix, but yeah, I mean, look, is there any of us really surprised that the government's not telling us exactly where our money's going? I'm not surprised, just more disappointed. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. (laughs) How I feel with our government constantly. But so here's, I guess it depends on why you believe speed limits are there. So one a minute a maximum speed limit that's lower you use less fuel conserve resources less emissions now when you're talking about residential neighborhoods those are there because as staying below that speed people will survive an accident or people will survive being hit by a car once you drop speeds below 30 miles an hour your chances of being hit by a car and surviving drastically improve but i think no one's really too upset about that, those kind of speed limits, kind of the below 45s. It's the below 40s. It's when you get into the 45s and 50s, 55s and 65, that I think there's a lot of disagreement. Yeah, it's kind of a gray area, almost like, well, for example, where I got one of my speeding tickets, I was leaving a, I guess you would call it a town. I think it's, that town's being generous to it. 
and about to go on to the middle of nowhere. Like I was in that in-between state where you kind of pick up speed to get to the average speed. And that's where I got caught is a word for it. It's I was doing I was doing 40 in a 30 mile per hour zone. It's like you see the 60 mile per hour sign just well, building up speed. It, it's such a gray area. And Nick, I don't know about the fuel economy for the highway, he said, with the 60, 65 miles per hour. I feel like when highways were first made to help America transport its troops better across the land, speed limits were just simply a component of what the cars were capable of doing and handling. Yeah. Well, and I want to point out during World War II, the national speed limit was 35 miles an hour to conserve gasoline for the war. So it could be worse, I guess, is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the I, I, I don't really see that as an avenue. I just see it being more maybe reaction time, not really fuel economy. The World War II for fuels makes complete sense to me. I mean, tanks need something to run on. Yeah. Now— and, and here's my argument. Most 45s I don't have a problem with, but it's it's the 45s that don't need to be 45s. They could be 55s, 50, stuff like that. It's the 45s that are longer than they need to be because it's a speed trap. It's just timber on either side. There's no houses. It's literally just there. And there's houses along the 55. So if if there was, if it should have been a rule of like, okay, if there's houses around, we got to lower it to 45. Why is it not every time there's a house? It seems that the 45s that are out there randomly, they're just speed traps. I just see cops sitting there because I live in a heavy, heavy tourist area. The cops just sit there on the weekends and just make bank. It's not about safety. It's, it's about money. Now, what I wanted to kind of talk about, Mike, is like, and you you touched on it for sure. The speed limit was in place because of what cars back then could do. And everyone knows a friend who's taken full advantage of their speedometer. You paid for the whole car. <laughs> you're going to do what it can do. Now, I'm not saying the speed limit should be 135, 140, whatever it goes to. But cars can travel faster now and are safer. And once you get past 65, you're or once you get past like 45 miles an hour, you're not going to survive a head-on collision with another vehicle. So morally, there's no difference if you're driving on a highway once you're going above 45 because if you're going to hit someone head-on, you're all going to die for the most likely. So I guess the question is, does it matter for morality if you save, you know, you save a few minutes by driving the 55 compared to 65 or 75 because odds are if you get in a head-on accident you're not going to survive now cars are getting safer today but if you hit someone if you're going full speed even above 55 you don't have a good percentage of living and a surprising amount of people and i say surprising just because i'm surprised that people are getting in accidents at 55 or so hitting someone airbags deploy and all that stuff and their paramedics fire department gets them out of there and they're alive but we shouldn't be counting on that i mean to back up what you're saying yeah we should definitely not be counting on that and to help back up what you're saying isn't that what germany does with the autobahn like if you're going to be traveling in that speed no speed limit because once you crash you're dead now don't get me wrong i do think there should be rules and regulations to the road there are a lot of dumb people out there but if I could add this caveat, I'd be willing to make the process of getting a driver's license or buying a car harder, so you have to be more tested. And it's, if you can pass that, have less rules on the road. Like, if you can pass the beginning, we know you're okay. Because here in Texas, there are some people who scare the hell out of me. They don't use their turn signals when changing lanes. They speed to a point where they're if I had a break, they're hitting me no matter what. Like, they have no rules of uh, distance. But if we thin that crowd out, maybe we can do away with speed limits. And I, I agree with what Nick said in the beginning. Urban areas probably should have speed limits. No one wants to see a kid get hit or a dog get hit. 
we should definitely have those areas kind of regulated density population. I have an interesting t- statistic for you, Mike. So I Googled, I want to know if people are getting in crashes more in urban or rural areas. And I so percent distribution of motor vehicle crashes, deaths by land use from 1977 to 2019. Starting in 1977, urban areas had more deaths from 1977 to 2015. 2016, or sorry, rural had more deaths until 2016. 2016, urban deaths skyrocketed to 55%. Or urban deaths skyrocketed, they went to 51%, and rural went down to 59 As of 20. 19, 55% of motor vehicle crashes are in urban areas. 55% of motor vehicle deaths are in urban areas and 45 are in rural. So I don't know what flipped going from 15 to 16. Why now it's more deadly to be in urban than rural. There's less rural, I would imagine. That's true. There is less rural, but it's been rural has been higher. I mean, the highest it looks like I see here is 61% of vehicle crashes in 2000 were in rural areas compared to 39 in urban and it switched now yes you have less urban you have less rural and i guess maybe it could be just more people are moving out into or more i guess yeah more stuff's coming urban i don't know it seems like it'd be the opposite to me maybe because i live in a rural area and i know that there's a lot of vehicle deaths because there's a lot of hard roads i live in a rural mountainous area so there's a lot of elevation change inclement weather steep turns which leads to a lot of uh, traffic deaths i would imagine but looks like now urban's leading the way in traffic deaths which is surprising the traditionally slower driving areas that is surprising but if i had to make an educated guess on why rural is was higher than urban for a long time i would say wildlife i wonder how many times a deer ran across and someone swerved to get out of the way uh like you said nick the roads the road qual- i've nearly totaled my car because uh, a road went from pavement to gravel with no warning like the speed limit was 70 and suddenly it was 20 and no signs no nothing and if you didn't know and weren't familiar with that area that could be bad and I guess maybe more people simply means higher percentage doesn't necessarily transfer over for amount of accidents. Like maybe the population kind of caught up of how many vehicles because, I mean, most families have more than two vehicles nowadays. So I imagine more cars, more drivers, just higher chance. Or maybe because people are just being assholes and just don't care anymore. But that does surprise me a lot that rural used to be much higher than urban. Yeah, here's here's another interesting t- statistic. And also it shifted in 2016. So this is percent distribution of fatally injured people with BACs above 0.08%. Pedestrians bear the biggest strain of drunk driving, which is fucked up. <laughs> I mean, more pedestrians die than drunk drivers from drunk driving. Pedestrians, presumably, I mean, I had to imagine people walking home from the bar. Can you imagine you make the right decision to walk home from the bar and get hit by a drunk driver? Oh, I'd be so fucking pissed. Can I, this is a way kind of off topic, but it does have to do with drinking and drunk driving. I, uh, I, I had a family shop that I used to be as as a toddler uh it was a printing shop and we used to have this cat i was too young to remember this people had to tell me this story but the cat once it got bored of hanging out in the shop would go across the street to the local bar and all the classic people would give the cat shots like leave the glass out and the cat would drink shots and it would stagger home drunkly one night well one night Apparently, the cat was so drunk, it decided it's going to sleep, uh, like, at the bar. Again, shoot out of the bar. It tended to cross the street. 
where another person leaving the bar, who is drunk, was also leaving. And at that moment, there was no more cat. So I guess pedestrians or people not in the vehicle with drinking and driving do take the blunt of the hit. Yeah, pour one out for your homie, Mike. So once again, can I pour one in? Pour one in, whatever you want to do. So this here's the read the statistics. So in 2015, rural pedestrians were the victim 35 percent of the time, and urban pedestrians were the victim 34 percent of the time. Urban drivers were the victims 29 percent, and rural drivers were the victim 27 percent. And then once again, that switched, where in 2016, urban pedestrians became the victim more than rural pedestrians. And rural pedestrians were the victim 32%, urban pedestrians 35%. So something happened in 2016. Now, it could be it could be just a, the U.S. changed how they classify urban and rural. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But it's there's something that happened in 2016 that caused that change. But... So I guess the point is, to be fair, speed limits have nothing to do with drinking and driving. We just got off on a tangent. But it it just seems weird. Now, I think, me personally, now I I don't know. This is just my guess. But I think drinking and driving is more common in rural environments. But that might be because I live here. I could see it the other way, too, because there's more chance to drink and drive in urban environments because there's more bars and and whatnot and less... less, uh, or more like public transportation kind of stuff. If I had to make an educated guess, and this is just an educated guess, no no facts, I would say rural is slightly higher, mainly because there's less public transportation. Like, it's kind of hard to get an Uber to, tra- to travel like an hour versus just, you know, zip on home from the local bar. That being said, I think it's kind of across the board equal where people drink and drive i i imagine the percentage is not that much different yeah it's a human quality not a not a urban versus rural characteristic hey nick you know what happened in 2016 which might have uh thrown the entire world into whack thanks obama well it has to do with our hometown chicago oh of course it does chicago cubs won the first time for 108 years <laughs> so maybe maybe the cubs winning kind of doomed everyone so the curse The curse was lifted for the Cubs, but it fell upon the entire country. That, I believe. (laughs) Yeah, that that seems seems about right. But again, I, I think speed limits have a place. But if you're not seeing... like God, Nick, I don't know if you have ever drawn through Kansas. There should not be speed limits in Kansas. There should not be speed limits in Kansas. I will second that. Yeah, I've driven through pretty much every Midwestern state. God, if you're, if you at least put something up, billboards or some art or something, because it is nothing out there. And you expect me to do 65 the entire way? Get out of here. Uh, just any state that flat earthers use to prove the flat earth theory <laughs> should not have a speed limit. <laughs> I can't. Rem- I can't remember. I was watching a flat Earth video, not because I'm a flat Earther, but just because I think it's hilarious. But they were using how flat. I, I can't remember if it was either Nebraska or I want to say Nebraska or Iowa, but one sub Midwestern state. They were using how flat that state was to prove that the <laughs> Earth was flat. And I was like, Yeah, I've driven through that state. Can <laughs> confirm flat Earthers that that state is in fact <laughs> flat as shit. <laughs> So, yeah, I see that. There should not be a speed limit there. If anything, I would say less speed limits in those areas and more caution signs of what kind of terrain, what kind of road, what kind of pathway it goes. Well, I think this could be... So I think there should be a rule. Hear me out. Follow me with this. If I this is dumb, let me know because I'm going off the cuff here. If the speed, If the road is two lanes, two lane one way, so I guess if the road is four lanes or more, there's no speed limit. Just a sign that says drive to conditions. And if the road is single lane, so I guess one lane either way, then I can understand a speed limit. Or I would say maybe a speed suggestion. So like the roads by me drive along a twisty, curvy, 
river going up and down hills it's extreme terrain but you have drivers who drive those roads every day so for me to drive 65 on those roads when and I like three in the morning with no one else out got the brights on it's not a big deal now I do acknowledge the risk of wildlife deer elk cows you have you definitely have a risk there well that's kind of your risk isn't it I un- yeah, you have to understand that risk. But you get people who come in from out of state or whatever because it's coastal Oregon, people drive up and down the coast, who do 45 the whole way. And as much as it annoys the shit out of me, I'd rather take some asshole driving 45 and not letting anyone around him than the people who come from. We're not going to name states here, but yes, we are California, who drive super fast in their fast cars around all the corners and then have to brake because they didn't realize that that corner was coming and it's just they have to drift in the other lane to slow and not like roll it's it's a whole thing Um, but they're not driving responsibly and they should that is the behavior that should get you a ticket not a person who's driven the road a thousand times knows twist and turns coming up and just the area that area is prone to landslides and trees coming down so you know you need to leave enough distance between every corner and oh shit a tree came down last night because of heavy rain now these are observations most people don't make just because people don't always think about the terrain they're driving in and and the weather patterns and stuff like that but it's kind of it seems like all that speed limits are is dumbing driving down to the dumbest possible person yeah i would agree with that i also would say that speed limits might go away in our lifetime due to automation but i like your idea nick of a suggestion not a necessary rule i can see being a rule in certain zones like school zones i understand it hospitals i understand it four lane road in middle of nebraska yeah, we don't really need that. God forbid you hit the corn on either side of the road the entire state. I mean, if you could just put a fucking compass heading, a declination in your car and just say steer, you'd be fine. I wonder how many people crash on purpose in those states just so something exciting would happen. And then the other thing, too, is speed limits, like, technically are suggestions. During adverse conditions, you're supposed to drive slower. Now, there's no area more apparent with this problem than the southern United States, Mike, and I'm assuming Texas included. You'll understand in a minute. Not every state gets snow. Many Americans don't know how to drive in snow. I was driving from Georgia up to Chicago during winter, and down south they got a huge snow. Oh, okay, that's not true. For the south, they call it a huge (laughs) snow. To give an example of how big the snow was down south, Waffle Houses were closed. I unfortunately know exactly what you're talking about. Please continue, Nick. And I'm driving on this big ice sheet. It's like a quarter mile, like big drainage, all the ice collected there. And so I'm just going straight because if I turn, I will spiral. <laughs> and I will spin out of control. And ahead of me, and I'm going... 10 below the speed limit i'm doing like 45 30 it's like a 55 or something through birmingham ahead of me i see this car i forget what kind of car it is there are probably two three car lengths ahead of me and i see them put their turn signal on to get into my lane again still on a sheet of ice it's like oh you dumb bitch (laughs) this guy puts his turn signal on tries to change lanes on the sheet of ice nope that's just not happening turns and just look i like i made sure i was like i'm driving through the south these people don't know what this is i'm gonna leave enough space he tried to get into my lane ahead of me i didn't have to break or anything he was able to get into my lane and pass swiftly and collide with the median (laughs) before and then stopping and i was able to just drive straight on pass without doing anything slowing speeding steering now a speed limit doesn't solve that problem at all And a speed limit at that time is still just a suggestion. So why do we have an uh, upper speed limit 
we have a speed limit, but we don't have like a medium. Now some roads do have like a 45 mile an hour minimum. I understand some highways and stuff like that. But I'd say the biggest traffic problem in my area is people driving too slow, mostly because, like I said, twisty, curvy roads. You get a lot of people from out of town bringing campers, driving up and down the coast, shit like that. Not always the best campers. Sometimes these campers can only go like 45 mile an hour uphill. And a lot of times people get so pissed because there's no passing lanes because it's a single lane road. You have cliff on one side and river on the other. But people get so pissed by these people driving slow They'll pass them when it's not a passing lane. And I'd say that's almost more a danger than going over the speed limit. I would agree with that statement. So I guess much like anything, we don't need to punish the people. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying people who drive over the speed limit are better drivers. But I'm saying there needs to be equal recourse for people driving like idiots, creating unsafe conditions. For example, pretty much every state has a law where if three people are following you in a single lane road, you're supposed to pull over. I have yet to see that enforced in my state. I've lived here for three years. And the largest caravan I have been in is 30 cars driving towards the coast. No matter what, you're not gonna be able to pass this person a single lane highway. I usually have to take a four to eight lane highway going to work and for some reason the person who always does the speed limit to the dot is in the far left lane the fast lane and i swear to god i thought this f-150 was just gonna swipe swipe this vehicle out of the way just to clear the path because it's very traditional for semi trucks not to be in the left lane there's even some signs for it because semi trucks tend to be slower so they stay in the far right lane listen I understand you're following the law and doing the speed limit, but if you're in the fast lane or passing lane, move over. Don't it, the, the left lane is not for you. The left lane is not for follow every law by every dot of the I and cross the T. Please stop traffic jams. Just move over. Now, I'm going to talk about something that I just my coworker just pointed out to me and they're called one speed wonders. And this is something that happens a lot on the coast. So the only time you really get to two lanes on the coast or small towns like this is when you get into town, right? So you drive behind someone, they're going 45 miles an hour. You finally get around them when you get to the, to the, to the town. Town's usually 30 miles an hour, right? So you're like, awesome, I can get around this guy. Well, these one speed wonders who've been traveling 10 miles an hour under the speed limit on the highway, they don't slow down when you get to the town. Now, I don't want to speed through town going 15 over, but these people just keep doing 45. So they get around you ahead. Again, you can't get around them. I never noticed it until my coworker pointed out. I complained about these people for years, never realizing what they were doing. He's like, yeah, they're one speed wonders. They just have it on cruise control and they just, that's as the fastest they're willing to go, but they're not willing to go any slower. They're just going to go 45, whether it be a 55 or a 30, they're going to do 45. I now have a new hate. Now, now I'm going to tell you how annoying this is to me. If I had FU money, and by FU money being so much money that I could spend it on a bunch of stupid shit, there's a marsh, uh, bay, estuary, salty, swamp, whatever you want to call it, by me. And I would like to build a fake ramp actually a real ramp but like with closed off signs and put a big billboard up there that says if you drove 45 miles an hour on the turns but then sped up to 90 miles an hour on the straightaways so no one can pass you take this exit and the exit is just a completely nice like looks very professionally done paved road that's just a ramp into the swamp that's what I would do with FU money. And I completely believe you because this is the second time you brought it up for your bucket list of things you want to do with money. Because that is more, that is so, so you're, that person is dangerous on every level. Now I had this the other day because, so let's talk about it. Like we said, if you go slower than the speed limit, people are going to do crazy things to get around you because they're pissed off. But then you go into town and you go above the speed limit. So in town, like you said, anytime you're above 40 miles an hour, you're more likely, a pedestrian is more likely to die than survive from an accident. So instead of doing 30, where a pedestrian could survive, you're going over that. And then I, 
I was following this person on this windy road. They were doing 35 miles an hour in a 55. We got to a straightaway, and luckily I was in my personal rig, so I didn't have like a company truck. They got up to 80 miles an hour in the straightaway. I could barely get around them, and I was not going to be stuck doing, because that was the last straightaway for, I think, like 20 miles or something. So I couldn't, impact, I'd be stuck behind them doing 35 for 20 miles. So fuck you guys. I'm getting around this guy. But people do that. And I think it's because people don't realize, like, they're like, oh, man, I can finally make up some time because I've been having to go slow. But I would say those people are the real dangers to society because the people who regularly drive those roads get so pissed. And I've heard every single kind of person who lives around here complaining about out-of-town drivers being stupid and crazy stories about how they've had, had to cross the not dotted line, cross the straight parallel lines or whatever to get around them to just fucking because they're about to blow their brains out. And... Everyone also has had a story where I was trying to get around this guy and they sped up and there's an oncoming car. So like they had to either go up or go down. So this is my other dream, Mike, and it's going to lead into your automation. Now, cars are getting more and more advanced with electronics. I would love if when you got to a passing lane, if you were the lead car in a convoy, you were stuck at that speed that you're traveling at. So cars that want to travel faster than that can get around you. Well, hopefully with automation and self-driving cars, we won't have this problem anymore. Granted, I still like being behind the wheel once in a while, but automation cars, we might all be able to do 120 and not have to worry about it ever again, which sounds wonderful. But Nick, I think we can all agree that the speeding laws, especially with speeding limits, need to change they need to be updated to the 21st century oh yeah i mean our cars are safer more fuel efficient and we haven't updated our laws since 1995 now i think it's you know if you want to i don't think people should be punished for traveling 55 to the traditional speed limit but i think it's time to put the hands the the choice the personal responsibility back in the hands of americans and if you want to drive fast, you can drive fast as long as you do it safely. If you want to drive slow, you can drive slow as long as you're not impeding other people, slowing, letting people pass you when, when you can get to a pullout. I think the speed limit, like we said, is, is it's delegating it down to the, to the dumbest driver, right? Like, this is what we think you can do. But we're not driving cars. We're driving cars that can go way above that. Yeah, it's like... Um... It's like the laws were invented before traction control, which is really weird. It's like, that would never happen. We'd keep constantly updating it. Wrong. Uh, but this is kind of a compromise between the existing laws and the laws, I hope. Maybe change the speeding ticket fines to be whatever you are over the speed limit times two. So if you're 10 miles over the speed limit, you pay a $20 fine. If you're $50 over the speed limit, I'm mean 50 miles over the speed limit, you pay a $100 fine. It's just... Just food for thought. Just some type of compromise. Just something. Especially especially in areas where, again, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Ohio, Indiana. When you don't see billboards for tens, if not hundreds of miles, I can't tell. It's all one flat state. It's all blurry. I have no idea about time or distance. You got to do, yeah, like doing 50 miles per hour in that zone is are just it's just not feasible yeah and and i want to point out i should have mentioned this earlier per my wife i drive like a grandma so i don't i'm not like an irresponsible driver but there are people who i, I think it's reasonable to drive like have your a driving style like me a relatively slow i have good braking i rarely wear brakes out as fast as other people i'm not not in control of my vehicle. I drive a Tacoma. I'm not driving a race car. And yet I can regularly, without ever slamming on my brakes or getting above 4,000 RPMs, because I try to keep it below two to three if I can, I can pass most other drivers safely. Now that's not the characteristic of an aggressive driver, if I had to guess. And Mike, I feel like we might be a little different on that. 
Like you might regularly get above that 4,000 RPM range, but no comment. Just the only thing I would add on is the day I get a sports car is the day I go to jail for speeding. <laughs> yeah. So I think it, it's, it's not at all tailored to skill and that's fine because there's, there's nothing in this world that's regu- re- regulated according to skill that that I know of, unless you know of something. It's pretty much tests that you can pass or can't pass. I guess professional athletes would be the only test relegated to skill. I was thinking skill. maybe uh, an Air Force fighter pilot, maybe? But I don't really know how that system works. So I, I honestly, none really but, come to uh, mind. That's tests you have to test into. So I think that's tests you can or can't pass. And then, like, once you get there, it's skill-related, if I had to guess. Not sure. Let us know if you know. But isn't it crazy that, like, again, I'm not saying I'm a professional driver, but maybe there should be some kind of skill test involved in driving. You know, you get your learner's permit, and then you drive for a little bit, and then you get another driving test of, like, okay. But it's not, uh, maybe it's not, like, a guy sitting in the car with you. It's just, like... Someone follows you around, you get like a year year window, and someone can come follow your car around with your license plate and see, do you use your turn signals? Or like do, I don't know, Not you're not going to be a huge fan of this, Mike, but the like Geico, all those fucking car insurance companies do the tracking that track your braking and your acceleration yeah, like for insurance purposes, that as long as you're not just aggressively breaking all the time. Uh, I don't know. There's got to be a way now, like not, like we said, there's really nothing I can think of that's skill-based. So I don't know why I said there's got to be a way we can do this, but it seems like something needs to change here with speed limits. Completely agree. We're in the 21st century using 20th century rules. And like you said, Nick, cars have come a long way, and I think it's time to bring our laws up to date. But out of curiosity, Nick, if people want to tell their suggestions on how to change the speeding laws or their speeding stories, where can they find us? Well, if you want to try and change the speeding laws or suggestions, I suggest talking to your local Department of Transportation, which probably won't get back (laughs) to you. But if you want to tell us all about it, you can hit us up on Backyard Philosophy Podcast on Instagram and Backyard Philosophy Podcast on youtube can they find us on twitter you cannot find us on twitter because twitter is essentially the person who is holding up all of traffic stopping all the speed of information stopping the people getting around presenting new ideas they're the 45 year old camper spewing black smoke when everyone is just trying to get around him to a better place (laughs) Well said, Nick. On that being said, thank you all for listening. Thanks for listening to the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We rarely finish a podcast without missing a point we wanted to bring up, so let us know what we forgot. And if you have a topic you want us to talk about, let us know at Backyard Philosophy 